I'm Peter Jacobs, the Foundation Professor of Hematology at the University of Cape Town, uh, where I've retired and now enjoy emeritus status. Um, professor of Internal Medicine at the University of Omaha, Nebraska, and Professor at the University of Stellenbosch and Tigerberg Academic Hospital in Hematology. And these are the comments we have around the recent opportunity we had of discussing some aspects of haematology with the underwriters. In the first segment of our review we spoke about malignant haematology and we now need to look a little bit more at the benign causes of disorders that bring people to the attention of uh, these professional colleagues. So if we start off with the red cells which are responsible for transporting oxygen around the body we have two possibilities, either they're increased or they're decreased. If they're increased, this is known as anemia, and anemia gives rise to symptoms in the patient of fatigue, um, anxiety, irritability, and decrease in effort tolerance, and there are a number of causes. By far the most common in the world, and particularly on the African continent, is iron deficiency, which may be due to poor intake, often in um, poor communities, or loss of blood from parasites, or bleeding from the bowel, which may be due to things such as cancer of the large bowel. So iron deficiency uh, is easy to diagnose, easy to treat, but the really important issue is never ever treat a patient with iron deficiency until you're sure you have established and corrected the cause. At that point it may be adequate just to give oral replacement and occasionally, very occasionally, this might need to be given intravenously. Also other nutrients are necessary for red cell formation, so iron on the one hand or vitamin B12 or folic acid. Um, vitamin B12 is very infrequent but when it does occur is uh, particularly hazardous because it may result in uh, neurologic damage at the same time and if this is not corrected and the patient is given some replacement therapy there may be progression and the injury to the spinal cord which leads to loss of ability to walk may become permanent so vitamin B12 deficiency uh, particularly in the form of Addison's anemia needs to be diagnosed relatively easy and it's crucial to make sure that replacement therapy is adequate. Folic acid is much more common um, because there may be nutritional insufficiency, inadequate diet, and many parts of the world have automatic replacement of folic acid in things such as bread to, prof to avoid um, damage to the developing spinal cord in young children. So anemia due to iron, firstly, less frequently due to folate, infrequently due to vitamin B12, easy to diagnose because the symptoms are all rather similar and the diagnosis is obtained readily from the full blood count and it is very important for underwriters to appreciate that a careful look at the full blood count is the logical starting place and helps direct the selection of tests for further characterization of the low red cell count which is in fact the way we practice medicine. Um, but a good look at the blood count is a, is a sound, um, disciplined starting place in guiding the investigation of your patient. Now if we look at the other side of the problem, when there are too many red cells, that's called erythrocytosis. It used to be called polycythemia, which is slightly different. Polycythemia is a variant of erythrocytosis in which not only are the red cells raised but white cells and platelets and polycythemia is a form of uh, malignancy arising from stem cells called or grouped together called the myeloproliferative syndromes. Erythrocytosis is also important because it results from um, abuse particularly due to smoking and obviously chronic damage to the lungs will result in a similar picture. So, Red cells divided into anemia and erythrocytosis and we probably should be able to get the diagnosis almost always from a good history, a careful clinical examination and very, very simple blood tests, usually the full blood count. So if we turn then to
to the platelets, the little cells in the blood that are responsible for interacting with damage to the vascular endothelium, then there are again two possibilities. There may be too few or too many. Too few platelets are called thrombocytopenia, and this may occur uh, courtesy of your parents on a congenital basis, but they are very, very uncommon. Much more frequently, they are acquired later in life and may be due to such things as infection, drugs, or um, not infrequently on an autoimmune basis as occurs with rheumatoid arthritis or of particular relevance in the Western Cape, systemic lupus erythematosus. They present with spotty bleeding under the skin in the lower limbs typically called purpura or tiny little spots called petechiae, but there may be quite big bruises called ecchymoses if you bump yourself. Uh, and it's very important in the patient who has low platelet count to be certain that it is benign and not part of a malignant process such as very particularly acute leukemia which may present this way. Um, the diagnosis can be made usually on the history, simple blood tests, occasionally, occasionally, much more, much less frequently now than in the past. There is a need for bone marrow examination. At the other side of low platelets are raised platelets or thrombocytosis and they may be benign or malignant. Uh, the majority of them are benign and they occur, for example, with a raised count normally about 250 times 10 to the 9 per litre, maybe as high as 5 or 600 in simple things such as chronic inflammation, in infection and in bleeding and they will respond as the underlying cause is corrected. On the other hand, where there is a defect in the bone marrow, as we said earlier on the factory, and there is overproduction of platelets, this is called essential because the cause is not always known, essential thrombocythemia. Now the very important thing about essential thrombocythemia is it can be diagnosed with considerable certainty on a molecular level so that some of the tests such as mutations in the JAK, JAK Janus kinase gene uh, is very helpful in separating out benign from malignant conditions. And for a long time these were treated simply by giving aspirin but if the D numbers pre-increased then chemotherapy, of which hydroxyurea was the standard. But happily medicine's advancing and it's now reached the stage where it is possible to direct the treatment, the treatment directed uh, medication with an agent such as anagrolide. There are side effects to everything you do, but it's a question of balancing risk for benefit in your patient and the patients and those with essential thrombocythemia enjoy very long periods of life, but there is always the presence of progression to acute leukemia, so surveillance within a skilled haematology group is essential.